let's start by thanking everybody in here, because the truth of it is, a movement needs a leadership. I also want to say why we're here. I want to point to Connor Levy, who's sitting in the corner over there, a hidden child from the Nazi era, and we, we have a slogan, which is never again. And it's about the question about how the other side organised in order to divide us and in order to attack us. And that's why we're here. But we're also here for another reason. Racism comes from the top. The people who are organising this, people like Boris Johnson and Donald Trump, they've started this, not because they're Nazis, by the way, but because it's an effective way in order to build up votes and win and divide people. It's an effective way to do that, but something else has happened. Actually, Gary Young pointed to it. It's actually not just that people like David Cameron pointed out that he didn't want any migrants here. They're actually using more harder and harsher racist language in order to galvanise people because they've actually got less of, an argue, less of an argument in terms of real solutions to people. The question is, why are things getting worse? One of the reasons why they're getting worse is because of polarisation. Last year there was 103,000... Um, 100, 103... 103,000 hate crimes recorded by the police. It's probably much more than that, but it's not recorded. But what it does say very clearly is that there's been an increase of up to 10%, an increase of 37% on trans crime and LGBT crime. In other words, we have to understand what David said before. Old racisms and new racisms have actually opened up the door for other people to, 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 to organise. But it's not just true, it's a one-way street. There's nothing inevitable about this happening. That's what's important about when, um, when Petros spoke from Kierfa. Because honestly, when I went to Greece, when I went to Greece with um, Steve, I let into a secret, I thought, my God, they're finished. Because everywhere you went, every, um, um, there was a, a meeting organised and Golden Dawn were waiting for us. Right? This is not a good sign. And I thought to myself at the time, the question about breaking them started off with the question that you had the confidence and the initiative to be able to do that. Why is that important? I remember being seven years old, going to school and being beaten up by the National Front, and thinking to myself, my life was over. That I tell you, what did end then? Childhood ended. I stopped being a child. I stopped thinking like a child. I stopped talking about play school and stuff like that. It was about question of survival. That's 40 years ago, whatever it is. We changed the shape of what happened by launching the Anti-Nazi League, and each time the fascists have risen, we've actually been able to push them back. The National Front, the BNP. I'm glad to say that we've got people on the stage now that defeated Tommy Robinson. I remember him coming on TV saying, I'm going to be the next MEP. I'm glad that Claude's an MEP. He ended up going to prison. Who put him in prison? Who put him in prison? We, we did. We put him in prison. <laughs> the problem is... The problem is they let him out. Right? And the reason why that's important is because each time they let them out, they get a little bit bigger and they get, it gets more and more polarised over what to do. That's the reason why we're organising. The reason why we're organising is because the question about what happened in the past was there wasn't a united front to expose and stop them when they were growing. And when people talk about leadership, it's not leadership from above. Don't get me wrong. I'm so proud that Diane Abbott and Jeremy Corbyn put forward that question of freedom of movement at the Labour Party conference. I'm glad that they did it. People didn't, some people didn't want to hear, but I'm glad that they did. But I tell you, there's going to be a problem. You see, people say talking about Brexit, whether you leave or remain, there's going to be a problem, isn't there? I would like to stop, our campaign is to stop Boris Johnson. We want to stop Boris Johnson in terms of anything he stands for and whatever it is. When this election campaign takes place, it will be the dirtiest election campaign I think we've seen. And there's going to be two outcomes. I would prefer a Jeremy Corbyn government. But i tell you something, there will be a backlash against the Jeremy Corbyn government, there will be a backlash against Diane Abbott, and we're going to need a movement to make sure that we defend anti-racist values. I also say there could be a nightmare. There could be a nightmare of a Johnson government as well. So sadly, we're in a growth industry. In terms of whichever way it goes today, and i tell you, let me into a secret, we thought today would be a quiet day. This is a good day to have a conference. We were definitely wrong today, in terms of what happened in terms of on Saturday. We were definitely wrong. But I think things are going to get bigger, and we can talk about which way we push them, depending how much we shake them. When I look across this room, I tell you what's important. Every time somebody tries to march and organise, somebody does something. Manchester, Leeds, whatever it is. Every time somebody questions us, 
The only time they invite us on to stand up to race into television is when they say a group has turned around and done something and broken something. And each time, I tell you why I'm really happy, my phone fills up with the far right ringing up saying, look what you've done to us, you've exposed us, you put us inside this position, you called us names. We said very simply, if you're a Nazi, we're going to call you one. And, the, and it's important as well, the other thing that's important is not to call Nazis who are not Nazis, not to call people who are not fascist, fascist. We've got racist populists. People like Nigel Farage is not, they're not fascist, and the groups around them, they're racist populists. They're attempting to build on it. It's very important to identify the disease if you want to have the cure. I think the final thing I was going to say is about internationalism. It's an international summit. We're not talking about something taking place in one country. We're talking about a growth and polarisation that goes up and down depending upon what's happened. When you look at this platform, when you see what's happening, I'm proud of what happened inside Germany, inside Chemnitz, or every time the AFD march, that people turn around and expose them and put them down. But they're part of a global movement, which we've got to be part of a global resistance. And everybody in here is part of that. So I really want to end up in saying, I know people have sat down patiently and listened to a whole group of different speakers and, and listened to what we've got to say. But what we're doing is rearming ourselves for a struggle that we're going to be involved in for the next next couple of years, and we've got to win it. Every time I listen to Colette Leakey tell me how fascism grew, and what it meant to her family and to the rest of people, I hear the words of what happened to a man called Mohammed Salim, who was a migrant that came to this country and was murdered in Birmingham by a neo-Nazi from Ukraine, who came to, you know what he said? He said, my country's been overtaken by these people, and it's going to be overdue. We have to join everybody together. When you, listen to, when you listen to the speaker from Ukraine, you've got to understand what happened. They threw petrol in their eye on a demonstration for the right of a woman to march. They attacked somebody because they were, they were LGBT. You listen to the people in, in, in France, they were attacked because they wanted to defend the right of refugees to come here. We have to bring all these things together. And I want to end up on a, on a really good note. In Liverpool, there was a strike by CWU workers. And you know what the strike was about? It was a right, they were striking because a Muslim were, a, a boss made a joke about a Muslim um, postal worker. And they said this, they said that somebody called Mohamed Shalom plays for Liverpool, and they said he's the best striker they've ever had. And they said that you're useless. That's what they said to the manager, you deliver nothing to us. And I tell you what's important about that. They think that racism is automatically going to be able to divide us. That strike in the CWU tells us that we have the majority in order to push them back. Because Christmas cars won't be delivered unless black, white, young and old, gay, straight all come together in order to use our strength in order to do that. Stand up to racism is going to carry on standing up to racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and we won't be defeated as long as we stand united. Thank you.